what's banned in pre-modern and why. So I really think a lot of newer players have some very big misconceptions about this format and I've seen people say that they'll never ever play because for example Force of Will is banned or you know some other card is banned and I just thought I should make a video to explain why things are the way they are, why certain cards are as powerful as they are and really just help newer players get into this awesome amazing format. So pre-modern only uses cards from these sets. It will never change, it's a locked format. We're just using these cards and we're not gonna change it. These are cards with the pre-modern card frame, the ones that look like this. So this is before they change the card frame to the modern card frame, which looks like this and has silver artifacts and all that kind of stuff. Now, one thing to think of when looking at the cards is the power level. Duress is the best discard spell in pre-modern, but it's clearly just not as good as the newer cards. And this is especially obvious with the creatures. New creatures are absolutely insane, whereas back in the day, you know, even a one mana two power creature needed a drawback because it was seen as just too good. It's too aggressive for one mana, it needs to have a drawback. You can also see this with bigger creatures that have upsides. The upsides are just nowhere near as good as today. And I want to address the situation that allied colors get fetch lands, whereas enemy colors don't. But back in the day, enemy colors were enemy colors for a reason. You weren't supposed to be able to easily play all the colors. And you can clearly see that as a general rule, multicolored cards are supposed to be better. You can clearly see that here and especially here where the five color slither is way better because it's supposed to be difficult to play five colors. So you're supposed to get rewards and payouts for that. And you can only fetch basic lands. There's no triomes or shocks. And there are also a bunch of lands that help you tap for other colors if you need that. And so moving on to two of the most misunderstood bannings. These were banned to keep the format fun, unique, and different from other formats. We don't just want to play a Legacy Light. And we do actually have free counter spells. All of these are sort of pseudo free. And two of them, Foil and Thwart, they would never ever see play if Force of Will was legal. Every blue deck would just play Force of Will. Similarly, with the card draw, every blue deck would play Brainstorm Fetch. Because we don't have that, it just opens the format up a lot and lets us play loads of cool and fun cards we just wouldn't see otherwise. And the list does change over time. Show and tell used to be banned, land tax wasn't, now it is. And it's kind of a meme of people saying that certain cards should be banned or unbanned. It's probably gonna keep changing over time. And so these cards are anti-cards and they're banned because the anti-rule is absolutely terrible and not allowed anywhere. Anti says that each player anties a random card at the start of the game and the winner will just keep that card and add it to their collection, keeping it forever. So this is obviously terrible and why they're banned. These cards are banned because they're just broken mana ramp. You know, accelerating into really big stuff very, very early is too good. And these cards just really, really push the limits of mana ramp. These cards are all banned because they tutor up another card for one mana. One puts it to the graveyard, the other one puts it on top of the deck and only does instants and sorceries. But still, these are just far too powerful and they really would just give combo decks an absolute crazy advantage. So that's why they're banned. And so these are banned for their ability to allow you to draw an obscene number of cards, paying one life for each card that you draw, which will just allow you to churn through your deck so quickly and it's just really far too powerful. These cards also allow you to draw loads of cards, allowing you to dump your hand very quickly, play one of these and just draw a whole bunch more. And it's also worth saying there's ways to either cheat them into play or to abuse them somehow to generate mana or just cast them too cheaply. So this is banned because it lets us reuse our graveyard, which is absolutely crazy if our graveyard's full of cheap ritual effects, generating mana, card draw, discard, free spells. You can even play a land from your graveyard with this. It's just really, really far too powerful. These cards are specifically banned to keep Storm in check. Mind's Desire can generate crazy amounts of value and also those extra cards that you play off it will add to the Storm. And Tendrils means that Storm can win by just playing nine cards plus the Tendrils. So it's really, these are banned to just keep Storm in check. Now Strip Mine is a land that taps for mana but also taps to destroy any land. As a land, meaning it's very hard to disrupt it or stop it. And we also have Wasteland in the format, which does a very similar thing for non-basics. If a deck had access to four of both of these, it would just be too oppressive and it would just really warp the format so much and lead to so many games that just weren't fun at all. So that's why this is banned. 
Goblin Recruiter allows you to stack the top of your deck with goblins, meaning you can stack it with goblin ringleaders, allowing you to just draw through a bunch of those cards and going absolutely crazy with a food chain, being able to sack them and play them all in a row using all their effects, etc. With a Goblin Lackey, allowing you to play the Recruiter on turn two and then ramp out into a food chain, this would just be absolutely insane. So Flash is banned because it allows you to put a creature from your hand into play and then sacrifice it immediately for two mana, which is absolutely savage. There's cards like Academy Rector, which while the enchantments that it searches up aren't as powerful as newer ones, they still allow you to pretty much win the game on the spot. There's not that many decks that can beat a turn one form of the dragon or a turn one you know, two five fives from Sapling Burst. Even just using a regular creature like Symbiotic Worm or Penumbra Worm, making loads of small creatures is gonna be extremely difficult for any deck to beat, especially if this is ramped out on turn one by something like a Lotus Petal. Balance balances all the lands, creatures, and cards in hand, meaning that the person with the most has to sacrifice down or discard down to the one with the least. This is really abusable with fast artifact mana, which allows you to just ramp out loads of artifacts and then play a balance, making your opponent sacrifice all of their lands and discard their hand. We actually have a fixed version of this in the format which looks at all permanents. It's still possible to abuse it, but it just has a much higher deck building cost and it costs more mana. So that's why balance is banned. World Gorger Dragon has an infinite mana combo when it's in the graveyard with one of these two cards. And if you don't have an instant speed way to use that mana, then this will actually result in a draw if there's no other creatures in graveyards as these abilities are not optional. So the whole infinite mana thing plus the chance of it just creating games that ends in draws, why this is banned. So Earthcraft is banned not only because it has an infinite combo with Squirrel Nest allowing you to make infinite creatures, but it's just a really, really strong card, even when used in a fair way, allowing you to totally abuse things like Guy's Cradle, Service Sanctum, or others. So being on the original ban list, then being unbanned, now being banned again. Land Tax not only fixes your mana, but it also creates an absurd draw engine with Scroll Rack, and there's ways around the not playing land parts, such as Mox Diamond or Undiscovered Paradise. And it went into a deck that played Oath of Druids, so you're not only punished for playing lands, but also punished for playing creatures, which is a huge part of magic and the cards required to deal with this combo are not available to all colors so these things plus the long drawn out games was enough to get it banned again so random discard is so much more powerful than regular discard you can ramp this out and make someone discard all of their lands very very early on so that's super strong but it also has a real feel bad factor to it which means a lot of people really don't like it and i do really think you should give the format a chance it's really fun and i really think you'd like it there's always someone saying the new most popular thing should be banned. I looked back a few years ago and people were saying Phyrexian Devourer needs to be banned, which is kind of laughable if you think about that now. So really, I do suggest you play it. It's so fun. Thank you for watching. Please do like, comment, subscribe, and bye-bye.